Good late afternoon slash early evening, people. We've got a couple of things to go over real quick today in this video. Uh, just some Seahawks news that's been floating around today. Worth going over for a few minutes here. First, though, I want to remind everybody that there is going to be a Hawk's Nest stream tonight over on his channel. Should start at 7 o'clock Pacific. Adjust accordingly if you're in a different time zone. We're going to talk about edge rushers and linebackers in this upcoming draft. We're going to talk about the Will Andersons. We're going to talk about the Trenton Simpsons, the Jack Campbells, the Miles Murphys. So show up and be ready to listen to a lot of stuff about the linebackers and edge rushers of the 2023 NFL Draft. Hope to see you there. We always have fun with it. It's probably going to be a very long show because this is such a good edge crop. So hope to see you there. Starts tonight, 7 o'clock Pacific on his channel. Okay. I'm not done with it yet, guys. I'm not done with it. I know some people are probably sick of hearing about it, but I, I got to at least make this one more video on it because to me this is kind of the nail in the coffin for this whole discussion because... Look, okay, we're back on the Ryan Neal stuff for just a few minutes here, and I know some of you people are probably going to be like, we need to stop talking about this. And look, I'll be done talking about it after this video, I think, but um, I want to really, really stress something here because when the release was made, when we pulled our restricted free agent tender on Ryan Neal, and I made the video where I said, I, I don't like it. I don't think this is good. I think this is a bad move. Um, I think this is our way of trying to save money, and it shows that this team is playing money ball in a way that other teams that are supposedly going for it are not. A lot of people said, oh, well, he probably went to the front office and said, can I please be released? I want to go. I want to go somewhere where I can play more. Or he went to the front office and was like, I don't want to be on the tag. I want to make more money. I want a long-term contract. I want more stability. And the front office decided to be nice. Yeah, I don't want to hear that anymore. So we got this tweet this morning from Greg Amon. Uh, Ryan Neal on Seahawks pulling their restricted free agent tender. The quote from Ryan Neal is, It definitely caught me off guard. It's kind of a funky, funny process these couple months. It's been real emotional. I've got nothing lo but love for them over there. Sometimes you may not be part of future plans. So what he's saying is he did not ask for his release. It caught him off guard. And then... You also have his one-year salary with the Buccaneers, minimum plus $152,000 bonus. So he is actually going to make significantly less money, almost half the money he was going to make in Seattle and Tampa Bay. His pay has been cut, no long-term guarantee. So both of those potential arguments are completely out the door. All right, so I don't want to hear that anymore. Ryan Neal did not ask for his release. And by the way, if that was the way this was going to go, that should have happened immediately after signing Julian Love. As it spins, we did not release Ryan Neal off of his tender until well into free agency when most teams had spent most of their money already. So if anything, the way we handled Ryan Neal was a huge detriment to him. If we were going to pull the tender then we never should have tendered him in the first place so he could have actually marketed himself to teams that had their cap space. Instead, he couldn't do anything until after most teams had spent most of their money, which is a part of the reason why he's ended up settling for basically veteran minimum money. Significantly, and I want to say that again, significantly less, and I know it's only like a million less, a little bit more than a million less, but for him, that is significant because that constitutes about half of what he's going to, would have made here. So neither of those arguments hold water anymore as far as I'm concerned. He it has gone somewhere where he's going to play more, potentially. Potentially, by the way, I want to stress that. The Bucks do have some promising things in their uh, secondary as well that may restrict Ryan Neal's opportunities, but... He has taken less money, no long-term security because it's a one-year deal, and he has said himself that the re re pulling back the RFA tender has caught him off guard. So this move was about one thing and one thing only. We're trying to save money. And I want to reiterate this very clearly. We need to save more money than we already have. As it stands, we are going to be a few million over the cap when the year starts. 
So we are not done yet, especially if you believe we want to bring back Puna Ford, which a lot of people are still talking about. So quite frankly, <laughs> I'm sorry, there's no other way to put it. Buckle up, because if we're willing to pull our RFA tender on a player like Orion Neal, who was one of our best players last year, we could do anything. I'm, I'm dead serious when I say this, and, and go ahead and quote me on this, and we'll see if I end up hitting it right. I would not be surprised if something happened with Uchenna Nwosu to where we move him or even release him so we can free up that money so we can actually pay our rookies. Or we're going to go into the draft knowing for a fact we have to trade down and we're going to take some crappy trade-down offer because, oh, we financially just have to do it. And that's not a good position to be caught in. It's forcing yourself to do something that may or may not be advantageous to yourself because financially you're just locked into doing it. And I don't I don't support it. <laughs> All right, so that's the Ryan Neal stuff. I just wanted to go ahead and say that as far as I'm concerned, and I, I think that it's pretty definitive at this point. I don't think anybody's going to really argue this. This move was not about what Ryan Neal wanted. He said it himself. It caught him off guard. And... He didn't, and his belief is that he wasn't part of the future plans. And again, this kind of screwed him over. He probably gets more money if he was a free agent during the early parts of free agency. Instead, he had to become a free agent when most teams had already spent most of their money. So I don't see how this helped him. I don't see how this was good for him. If anything, I would be, if I'm Ryan Neal, I'm not happy with this organization at all. I'm not happy with the way the Seahawks did him at all. You tender him and trap him for a week and a half or two weeks or whatever it was, and then you let him go free when the money's all dried up. All right, so that's the Ryan Neal stuff. I'm still not good with it. I'm still not happy about it, and I think we may not be done making these uh, salary-slashing moves. Uh, the other bit of news that came out a, a couple hours ago, the Jets have signed defensive lineman, former Seahawk Quentin Jefferson. He is now off the market. So Quentin Jefferson, there was some talk that he might come back. I don't think anybody's going to be too unhappy about the fact that he's not coming back. He was certainly not a great player, but he was an okay player. He added some value. He actually played really well at the end of the season, I think. Uh, delivered some really good value as a pass rusher over the past last month and a half of the year, I would say. But overall, just a kind of a guy. And um, I'm interested to see the kind of money he gets from the Jets. But um, yeah, he is now off the market in terms of like, you know, a uh, sign back. Shelby Harris still out there, to my knowledge, though, and uh, Al Woods still looking for a job as well. So those guys could come back, but Quentin Jefferson is going to the New York Jets. So that's basically the news. Once again, want to remind everybody, go check out the Hawks Nest show tonight. I will be on it. We're probably going to go for like at least two and a half, maybe three hours. Hope to see you guys there. Go Hawks.